Greetings to all those who are confined behind the walls of their home, like me. Welcome to Girl with Portia, Quarantold Edition. I'm your host, Portia Booker, and yes, this is my real name. Grew with Portia targets those who are curious, eager, and hungry for new information that can aid in their personal and professional development. Malcolm X once said, education is the passport to the future, but tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Never stop learning. Be a sponge for the rest of your life. Before I jump into my topic for today, I want to introduce my guest. Welcome back, Miss Ashley Bakewell from It's Just Lunch Cleveland. Welcome, Ashley. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here again. I know, right? Remotely. <laughs> it's working, though. It's working great, actually. <laughs> I agree. I mean, so how is COVID, you know, impacting, you know, your personal life and your work life? So personally, you know, it's definitely been interesting. I have two kids at home, so teaching and work and, and not being able to go anywhere has, has been challenging. But it's also been fun. We've gotten a little creative with you know, doing things around the house and we've been keeping things clean. So it's certainly been interesting. Um, and it's really nice to spend time with everybody too. So I think everybody is just used to their busy day-to-day -day lives and not that we're still not busy, but it's definitely a different pace. So it's, it's been unnormally fun. I agree. You know, a lot of people are complaining about COVID like, oh, I'm not working. There's nothing to do. I found plenty of stuff to do. Um, yep. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's been wonderful. Um, I started a new diet. Like, it's it's been challenging, I'm not gonna lie. Whenever okay. you start a whole new lifestyle change from changing what you eat, changing the times that you eat, changing the amount of meals you have, the portion sizes, I mean, it's a lot. It, it's like your body goes through a whole shock factor. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> like, I think I've had a couple of days where my blood sugar went too low. So I had to like grab either a spoon of peanut butter or like something else to like give me a quick jump start of energy. Right. Well, good. That's exciting though. I mean, change is definitely tough, but I mean, we got to be healthy and it's definitely, um, you know, a good start. So good luck with that. Keep up with it. I know you can do it. Yeah. It's, it's fun. I really enjoy it. I mean, for me, I love learning new stuff. So, you know, trying out new foods that I probably would have never thought to cook. Like, for example, right. my, uh, my trainer does all of my stuff remotely. So we have our weekly check-ins on Sunday or Monday, and then all of my meals are laid out for the week. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so like it's for nice to know though what you're having like me as you know a busy professional slash full-time mom and full-time worker I mean dinner and lunches it's challenging for me to think like what are we gonna like tonight I'm, I'm not even sure what we're doing yet so <laughs> I like the plan the planned out it's smart yes and for me it works out great because I have the same stuff Monday through Friday for breakfast <laughs> lunch and dinner <laughs> perfect <laughs> I mean, the only difference are my snacks. So like my favorite snacks out of the two, well, there's six that I have on my sheet that I can pick from, mm -hmm. but I love my smoothies in the morning. So yes. my smoothie consists of like blueberries, bananas, strawberries, and a cup of almond milk. Yum. Good. My other snack is dark chocolate. Oh, I love- That's a winner right there. <laughs> and the best part, Ashley, is that I can have two- glasses of red wine a week perfect yes i can so <laughs> only two a week only two a week oh goodness <laughs> included in my diet so it's like to me it's a win-win that's good perfect you know good. i'm not you know i'm not somebody that has to like binge on everything you know right i'm perfectly fine with just two glasses good well that works i love it i know i'm i'm keeping up i'm trying to my workouts are a pain <laughs> especially like because I have designated days so you figure like Monday is like arm and leg day Tuesday mm -hmm. is like cardio day I like cardio personally that's my favorite the ab stuff uh, <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm like dreading going through it because it's it's nice but it's annoying especially when you're not somebody who really cares for that particular workout 
right you know yeah I get that <laughs> but I'm just proud of myself for just starting it you know you know how you set a goal for like every year people say oh I'm gonna lose weight I'm gonna you know stop um binge drinking pop or whatever yeah but I mean I actually had this on my vision board for 2020 and Good. I'm like oh well you know I'm late starting but you know better late than never and exactly what not a perfect time right now it is a perfect time to do those things I 100% agree um and stick with it you know it's not easy but if you just stick with it just take one day at a time you can do it Yes, I look forward to my workouts every day. I do. Good. Um, That's great. Because I, you know, I work remote as well, which is nice, you know, because I can start my workout the minute I get off work, <laughs> <laughs> you know, instead of having a 20 minute commute back to the house, then have to change clothes, yep. you know, <laughs> fill up on water. If I didn't fill up on water throughout the day, like, you know, just a whole big mess, you know. So yeah, I definitely love that aspect of, you know, being home is the convenience piece. Um, and for me too, I mean, not, not only as a, as a parent, but work-wise too, it's just super convenient. I can hop in my little home office and make a call to a client and check in on how their date went anytime. So um, the convenience piece, I would say, is certainly my favorite part. Yeah. And see, I've been saving so much money. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. I mean, from gas to food. I mean, I haven't had any fast food in about four weeks. Good. That's great. So no crack Donald's, no Taco Belly egg, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, and you know what? I think a lot of people, there's just a lot of changes happening with quarantine too. And there's, there's a lot of good coming from it. I guess it's my point, you know? I know it's a challenging and scary time for a lot of people, but there's so much good coming out of it. Just like with It's Just Lunch, you know, we have been busier than ever, believe it or not. You know, we wow. weren't sure. Yeah, we weren't sure which, which way this was going to go. You know, are we going to be not that busy or are we going to be insanely busy? And it's been nuts. And I think it's because, which is a great thing, um, but I think it's because people are home, they're alone, they're single, they have more time on their hands and they're realizing that they don't want to be alone forever. So they're giving us a call and we're getting them on some really great virtual dates. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I mean, you think, you know, social distancing, you know, nobody wants to go out. Everybody's going to have to have one. <laughs> like I saw a <laughs> meme, I think on Facebook, where it had like the different four by four pictures. And one of them had like date number one. Both people are standing like, in a parking lot with mask on and they're like <laughs> having lunch like across from each other in the parking lot on their cars i'm like what <laughs> i love it i love it though i think that's a great idea you know you gotta go I, it's on normal times but don't stop from having a love life don't stop yourself from starting that diet and working out like don't stop your life for this we can still continue to do the things that we want to do and we need to do and the goals, especially dating, you know, that's a big one. Don't love is not canceled. And I think people at first are like, what, how do I date? What do I do? We can't meet, you know, there is a way. And I have a lot of details on that. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to hear. Cause I mean, uh, me here, I'm Ron solo seven years. So, you know, I'm like, I need probably to step my game up or figure out some type of solution because this mathematical equation that I've been <laughs> riding with for a while is not adding up anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got to take some action, you know, and it's so easy to fall into the normal day to day being busy and kids or whatever your schedule is, you know, podcasts and work and all this stuff and your trainer, but the reality is in the end, you want to be with somebody. So you got to take some action on that. So whether that be online dating or calling a professional matchmaker, there are ways to get out there, to date people, to start meeting new people. I mean, it is something you have to take some action on. You know, we all want it to happen organically. You know, I was telling a client just yesterday, yeah, of course we want to walk into Starbucks and the love of our life walks in and <laughs> pays for our, our, 
our coffee and asked us on a date and it's the best date we've ever had and you're flying off into the sunset together. Of course we want that to happen, but the reality to 2020 is it's not. It's not going to happen as organically as we'd all love it to happen. You know, most of the time we're walking into Starbucks, we're on our phone checking emails or getting back mm-hmm. to a text. Like we're looking down. We're not paying attention to the people around us. So if you're more aware and more present, you'll meet more people, start saying hi to people. I mean, there are ways that you can open up and, you know, meet some, meet people and start dating again. So you got to, you got to get out there. I've got some crazy Starbucks stories from when I used to live out of state. Starbucks was my second home because I refused to pay for internet when I lived in my apartment. And Starbucks stayed open late. It stayed open right. till about yeah. like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So it was perfect for me, you know, go there, do all types of stuff on my computer. I could people watch, which people watching right. is hilarious. And sometimes I would get the occasional cute first responder, whether it's firefighter or police officer that would come in. And I'm like, dang, he's so cute. And I guess he must have read my thoughts because sometimes they would look over at me and I would get a wink on occasion. And then, of course, my face would burst into flames red because I didn't know what to say. (laughs) Just say hi. Hi. I was starstruck. (laughs) (laughs) My brain was like, (laughs) like just complete shock factor. Like, oh, (laughs) I'm actually physically here, not looking through, (laughs) you know, a glass or something, you know. So, yeah, I've got plenty of Starbucks stories where that has occurred. (laughs) I love that. See, you just got to open up and be a little more open to... You know, and and like you just mentioned, he must have known you were like checking him out, right? Law of attraction. You put that out. If you put that vibe out there into the world, it's going to come to you. Yeah. Like I said, I've had it occur several times when I've just been at Starbucks, (laughs) just working. Like I'm literally busy working, doing, you know, checking emails, reading this, reading that, researching this. And they just come out of nowhere, you know. They come when you don't want them to come because you're busy. (laughs) And that's what people tell me, like, Portia, just stop looking because they always pop up when you're not looking. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. (laughs) It happens. You know, it sounds like you need to get back into that Starbucks. Well, I don't live down south anymore. I don't live in, uh, in Tulsa anymore, but... I know there's plenty of Starbucks around, you know, Northeast Ohio and whatnot, yeah. but yeah, no, I was <laughs> like, no, no. See, I want to actually like physically talk to them this time. You know, if I do go into a Starbucks that I make my home base, right? you know, if they do approach me or they feel my radiant eyes gazing at them, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're like, oh, hi. And then I actually know, like, oh, they're talking to me and not somebody behind me, you know? Right. <laughs> I actually want to be prepared this time. So that's well, now what I'm you are. Like. Now you are. You just got to say hi. And that starts a conversation. How's your day going? There you go. It's yeah. easier than you think it is. I think everybody, when it comes to dating, whether, again, it's either online or just meeting people out or working with a matchmaker, people just think too much. Stop thinking so much. Just get out there, you know, have a smile on your face. You know, people want to date people that are smiling and happy and positive. You know, if you're giving out that vibe, you're going to attract people that are attracted to you and vice versa. So, but I, the first step is, is to get out there. You know, you're not sitting at home, not doing anything and, and eating, you know, chocolate cake all day isn't going to get you a date. So you got to take some action. Why eat dark chocolate to help me when I'm hungry? So <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> so Ashley, you know, let's dive in. Due to this pandemic, you know, a lot of businesses and things have closed down. Lots of entertainment spots too as well. But even though things are starting to open up slowly, some people are a little leery about going out. So, you know, before people even decide to want to jump back into the dating scene, what are, you know, some first steps people should take before putting themselves back on the market? 
Yeah. So I think, um, you know, a couple steps you could take is definitely self care. That's number one, you know, go get your hair done, get your nails done. Um, you know, feel good about yourself, feel confident, be ready to get back out there. I think that's important. You know, um, I've been telling a lot of my clients, you know, during this time, write down some of your goals, you know, what are you really looking for out of that other person you want to spend your life with? You know, obviously that list can be long, but definitely, you know, always have in the back of your head, your must haves, you know, you want to definitely be searching for the things you're looking for. So self-care, writing down some goals. Um, but also let's talk about online profiles. You know, if you are dating online, you definitely want to stand out, you know, online dating can be overwhelming, especially when you're sorting through hundreds of profiles. So it's easy for one person to blend in with the other. So it goes without saying that it's definitely important to stand out when you're online dating. So first and foremost, use a current picture, you're going to meet this person eventually. So there's no point in using photos that are outdated. Um, and there's nothing worse than showing up and seeing that surprise on someone's face when, you know, you aren't exactly what they were expecting. So I'd say, um, most importantly, have a, have a recent photo up there, have a few different photos, you know, um, definitely have a photo of some hobbies that you enjoy doing. Um, I think that's important. Or, you know, if you have a dog or animals, I think showing a little bit about yourself in a photo can say a lot when you're online dating. Um, but you know, kind of just snap a couple pictures of your life too. Um, you know, don't use 10 different selfies, um, in the bathroom or in the bedroom, you know, <laughs> so, uh, you, you definitely want to have enough in your profile where it gives a nice idea about you, but don't give them too much you know, keep it short and sweet, highlighting things that make you different, make you interesting, um, you know, express some of your traits, your qualities, those things are going to attract people. So if you're online dating, those are some really great tips to take into consideration when you're building your profile. See, Ashley, I'm guilty of that, having selfies that look <laughs> similar. I mean, I like taking selfies, don't get me wrong, but I guess I just happen to do them at the same angle, not necessarily in the same place. <laughs> so that's, I'm guilty for that, for the selfies. Well, um, and I think people don't realize that. I, I think when they're online dating, they don't really think about how you're presenting yourself. And the reality to online dating, which, you know, I, I don't love so much is you're just sorting through thousands and thousands of pictures. So you got to stand out. And that's, that's important. Now, Ashley, do you find that when it comes to online dating profiles, you know, when you're dealing with clients, do you find that like shorter profiles tend to get more like traction or people that put like their whole monologue on there and you're sifting through or do, does it just depend on the person? I think it, I think it truly depends on the person, but, um, I would say majority of clients or majority of online daters they, they don't want to sit there and spend 20 minutes reading a paragraph about somebody they may or may not like. So I think keeping it short and sweet and realistic is important and be honest, you know, also too, you want to, the fun about dating is the mystery of getting to know somebody. So don't give them everything about you. Um, here at It's Just Lunch, when we tell our clients about another, you know, I'm not telling them every single thing about that client, I'm getting some, a couple hints and, and some traits and qualities that they have and, and giving them a few specifics, but I don't want to spoil it all. You know, there's things I want them to talk about on that date. Um, and that'll start, you know, so a conversation. Well, and then too, it's like, you don't want to have repellent, scare them away with like, oh, this person loves doing this. I'm terrified of that. <laughs> That's true. And I actually love that you bring that up because, you know, I've seen that in the past where, you know, a client will talk about maybe skydiving and this isn't a great example, but you know, they like to sky skydive. And then I'm telling, you know, the match about this client and he likes to skydive and it might scare them away. And I always tell my clients, listen, 
just because they have hobbies and interests that may not completely align with what your hobbies and interests are, it does not mean you're not going to like that person. And it also doesn't mean you got to get off, uh, get on a plane and jump, uh, jump off with it, off it with them. So keep those things in mind. You know, also you always compromise when you meet somebody, you know, a great example, if you meet somebody, a, a man that really enjoys sports, you may not be a, be a big sports fan, but you're going to compromise. And if he wants to go take you to a baseball game, you're going to go and I guarantee you're going to have fun. And who knows, you may really end up loving baseball. So I've seen that happen before. And I mean, that's happened in my life before. So you got to be open-minded. And I know we've talked about this in the past, being open-minded about those things, but just give them a little glimpse on your online profile, a little bit about you. And as you get to know each other more and more, you'll learn new things. And that's the fun. That's the fun about dating. Well, yeah. And see, I'm somebody, I like to try everything. Like, you know, <laughs> now... If somebody, now I'm definitely terrified of swimming. I will admit that. That's why I keep a life jacket in my car underneath my seat. So with that being said, not to say that I'm going to completely shy away from swimming at all, but, you know, when it comes to different things that people may like that I'm kind of like, mm, I'll at least give it a try. At least one. <laughs> that's good. I think that's great. You know, I'm the same way, you know, Obviously, uh, some activities are a little scarier than others, but like change, we just talked about it, you changing your diet and working on your health, like those things are always scary and nerve wracking, but it's, it's can be really fun too. I, you know, I brought on a client this morning and she said, I'm so nervous, Ashley. And I said, good, you should be nervous. You know, you're about to do something really fun and exciting if you're nervous. So, and I told her, I said, if you weren't nervous, I'd be nervous. I want you to be nervous <laughs> and excited. So, um, you know, all that goes along with it. My cousin posted something on Facebook like a year ago, and it said, if something excites you and scares you at the same time, that means it's for you. Yep, I agree. I'm reading a book that's very similar, and it talks a lot about that. And I think that's a, that's a problem with, with people right now and, and them being alone is, they don't want to take that leap. They don't want to, they're scared. They're nervous. And same with dating. You know, when you do start dating, not every date's going to be amazing. It's dating. You got to kiss some frogs, right? You got to go on a couple bad dates. You know, he might like you, you might, might not like him, vice versa. These things are happening when you're dating. These are good signs. It can be discouraging. And some people, it will lead them to want to give up and throw in throw, throw in the books. Right. But don't be discouraged. You know, it is a part of dating and sometimes it truly can be a numbers game. Yeah. It seems like that for me a lot. I mean, <laughs> now I've been on different online dating sites for several years on and off. Like I'll be on for maybe like a month and then I'm like, okay, sign or like, <laughs> you gotta just stick with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true well it's like I get tired of sifting through the crap I mean because like you said you're gonna go on some bad dates you're gonna kiss some frogs well in my case I find it where after the conversation is going from maybe like 10 minutes back and forth the person goes ghost or if you know if I give them my cell phone number and we're talking through text which I hate texting but you know <laughs> I'm one of those old school people. I prefer, you know, phone call, we talk, get to know you that way, you know, mm -hmm. because texting can get just yeah. words without, <laughs> you know, a voice behind it. It's like, it's like dry text. It's literally just dry words to me. Maybe not well, everyone sees it that way, but. And texting can be taken way out of context. Um, I don't love texting when it comes to dating. Matter of fact, I tell a lot of my clients, try and stay away from it. Just get on a date or hop on the phone and talk if you guys can't get together. Um, because I've seen it happen, and I'm sure it's happened to many, many, many people, is you know it can be taken out of context. One little thing said wrong in a text that really maybe wasn't even meant to you know, come off that way does. So you've got to be very careful with texting. So especially in the beginning of a relationship, when you're meeting somebody, you know, I highly recommend getting on the phone and talking. If you're not able to meet like quarantine right now, you know, we've been doing virtual dates here at It's Just Lunch. 
and it's gone amazing, like amazing. We love it. My clients are loving it. Um, it's been really fun. It's a good way to get to know somebody. So I, I definitely suggest staying away from texting. If you can stick to phone call, meeting in person or a virtual date. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have the attention span for texting. Like, I, just a side digression. I can't stand it when people send me long texts that's like, you know, bigger than my hand. It's like, you could just call me. <laughs> like, exactly. Like, yes. I can't do it because I get lost in the words and I'm trying to understand what you're trying to say, especially if you don't use the full word and you try to abbreviate certain things you know every generation is different when it comes to right. abbreviations so it's like I'm trying to understand this acronym that you just put this abbreviation it's like no it, it's like trying to solve an algebraic <laughs> expression and I'm like <laughs> yeah yeah stop texting if you're dating and you just met somebody I highly recommend to take it back a little bit on the texting and t say that too you know I mean I've seen situations where a couple had a really great date and planned a second date. And then, you know, they were texting all day long and, and one of one, you know, one of the matches got really busy at work or had a family emergency and then maybe didn't respond in a timely fashion or maybe the next day. And that other person is, is super turned off by that. But that's the problem with texting is, you got to realize people have other things going out on in the day and they can't just sit there on their phone all day. So it comes with being open-minded, you know, things come up. So texting is definitely something I tell all my clients that it's just lunch to stay away from tap on the phone. Like I said, the virtual date is a great, great idea to, to do right now while we're, you know, at home. So. And actually for, you know, people who are listening, can you list the uh, website, or uh, it's just lunch. So if people wanted to learn more information. Yeah. So it's, it's just lunch and um, you'll just fill out your name and phone number and we'll give you a call and explain how our service works and um, you know, what you're looking for. So that's a little bit of about our process is we get to know all of our clients, we meet them and um, we match them with potential matches that they want to meet. So no riffraff, in 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 no sorting through thousands of pictures on the internet you know i get i get you in front of the women and men you want to meet and see that's great because see that's my problem it's like you know it's like going to a meat market like it's, <laughs> it's bad to describe it that way but it's true it's like you're it's going through and you know we all have our physical characteristics that we like in a person and I don't always try to go by that. Like, I try to look if there's some substance there. You know, okay, yeah, you look nice, you know, like Leonardo DiCaprio on the outside, but on the inside, you're a dud. Pew, goodbye. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. So, you know, Ashley, your profile's amazing. First candidate finally messages you. Both of you decide to go on a virtual date. So, you know, can you tell our listeners who may not know or may not really understand what is a virtual date and how does it work? Yes. Yeah, so um, virtual dates can be handled a few different ways. Um, you could use Zoom, Google Hangout. You could use um, FaceTime. There's a few different options, but it's really simple. Um, it's just a link that you guys will each click on and either have your laptop or your phone. Um, available and you guys will just have your date from literally in the inside of your home. Um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of, um, right now it's a really good plan because, because of what's happening with quarantine and we launched virtual dating here and it's just lunch in April. And, um, we've been doing it for, you know, we're still doing it. We may continue with it. We're not even sure yet because it's going so well. Um, but, definitely is some things that you need to remember on a virtual date. You want to still treat it like an actual date. Um, you know, pick a spot you feel comfortable. Remember it's a first impression and a glimpse into your own personal space. So um, lighting is really important. Um, you want to make sure your date can see your face very well, not just like a silhouette of your face. You know, I always say if you have a window available, um, you know, natural lighting is always best. 
Um, but keep your background simple. You know, we suggest picking a room other than a bedroom for a virtual date. Um, but make sure you put away anything you don't want to show on camera. You know, get that dirty laundry off the floor, clean up a little bit. Um, but when in doubt, if you're not sure if the virtual space is, is date ready, get a second opinion, you know, call your girlfriend, see if it looks okay. But you also want to get dressed up for the date. I mean, even though they can't see your full body, you want to feel good. You want to feel confident in this date, you know, throw on some makeup, do your hair, you know, treat it like an actual date is really important. I'm glad you mentioned that about the the setting of the virtual date as in like inside of your house and picking that perfect space and making sure that there's not things that you don't want people to see. Yeah. You know, so don't choose, you know, the laundry room or, you know. Right. <laughs> I mean, I think an ideal space to me would probably be just an office. Like if you have an office in your yeah, house. Yeah, I mean or, I mean, I don't think a kitchen table is fine, too. You know, grab a glass of wine, coffee, beverage, you know. Um, you know, get comfortable. Be somewhere you're comfortable at. Um, but, yeah, I think anywhere that's clean and, and doesn't have too much going on is, is a good background. Um, but somewhere you want to feel comfortable. You know, you don't want to be standing in, you know, by the fireplace the whole time. You want to be sitting in a, in a comfortable spot. So I think that's important. <laughs> Well, um, then don't catch yourself on fire either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful with that. So, um, but I also think too, a good rule of thumb is for a virtual first date, at least plan on 30 minutes. You know, I've had, we've had virtual dates happening 30 minutes to three hours. So uh, I definitely think, you know, 30 minutes is just enough time to get to know that person. But if you're having fun, continue. Uh, but keep in mind that many people you know, make a snap judgment about the other person within the first few seconds of meeting them. So, um, and it, it's not a great practice to get a good sense about who someone is, especially on a first date when you're both nervous. Um, so get, you got to get used to the first virtual date. So if you want to hop on the phone with a friend and feel comfortable with it, I've been, you know, each new client before their first dates, I've been getting on the phone with them making sure everything looks okay and they feel good and comfortable with it. Um, but it's super easy. You know, I think people, technology and it scares them. It's really easy. It's just a link. Click on it. Have a virtual date. You know, you can get creative with it too. Uh, have make dinner together. Play a game together. Um, you guys can, you know, a lot of the virtual settings could share a screen. You guys could, you know, watch a movie together if you wanted to. Now, I don't want to do that on a first date, maybe third or fourth date, but you can get creative with it. Even though we're still in our homes right now, you can still date and have fun. Yeah, that that sounds like a lot of fun. The examples you gave, like playing a game or something. Um, I went on a virtual date maybe about a month ago. Okay. And it, it was very fun. Like me and, me and this guy, we had a lot in common like, you know, older values, like some of the old TV shows that I used to like to watch. He was currently watching them. So we oh, watched one of them together, um, okay. which, which is Dragon Ball Z. I used to be a big anime fan, you know, when I was younger, which I, sometimes I have time to watch, but not very much now. But, you know, he was watching it and I said, hey, I, I want to show you something. And he's like, sure, show me. So I have all of the action figures from Dragon Ball Z that I've collected since I was a kid. Okay. So he was like, oh my God. He's like, I've never met somebody who has all the action figures. I'm like, yep, I was a fan. <laughs> See, and that's that's a great example of, you know, a virtual date can it's it's almost just like a regular day. I mean, obviously we want you to get out meeting people and in restaurants again and going to the park, but right now it's a really great way to meet people face to face and then decide if you do want to go on a date with them at a restaurant or meet them at the park. So it's, it's, it's a really good, it's a really good uh, practice that we're doing right now. And, and my clients have been loving it. You know, a minor digression. I think, you know, we had talked about this earlier about COVID and how, you know, a lot of people are having a lot of positivity come into play for me. COVID has really sparked my creative side a lot. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, from my podcast to, you know, managing other podcasts, working on my books, like all my other side projects that I probably would never have time to do if, you know, if the country didn't take a pause for a moment. <laughs> I've been able to dive into them and I don't feel rushed. Like right. I don't have to set a timeline on, well, I have to get this done by March. I have to get this done by July. I have to get this done right. by December. Like it's just been wonderful to me. And I think, you know, with dating right now, people should look at it the same way. You know, I can yeah. take the time. I agree. You know, Dating isn't supposed to be stressful or overwhelming. It's supposed to be fun. So um, I think you're exactly right. Yes, you want to have your goals and and know where you want to be in the next few years dating wise. You know, if that if marriage is long term, you definitely want to be working towards those goals. But it's not a rush and do it at your own pace. So, and like I mentioned before, it's, it's can sometimes be a numbers game. So you, you got to get out there and go on a couple dates, kiss a couple frogs. But if you keep being focused on that end goal and stay positive and, and understand it's dating, these things are supposed to happen, then you will get in the arms of somebody really special. I promise you. And that's great. Thank you, Ashley, for, you know, sharing that. You know, I, I really hope that our listeners take a lot of this and, you know, apply it. You know, education yes. without application is useless. I was one of my favorite journalism professors from Kent State's <laughs> line every time. Education without application is useless. So, <laughs> so Ashley, <laughs> let's back up a minute. <laughs> you kind of talked about how some virtual dates may not, you know, go as well. And, and most of the time, the person who you're on a date with, they can kind of judge like if the date's kind of going eh or oh yay. So, what are some common virtual dating deal breakers? So, separation is definitely one. You know, some singles might be realizing that distance doesn't really make the heart grow fonder. So, if they're okay with being separated and aren't really worried about seeing that other person again. They may determine it's time to move on. Another virtual dating deal breaker might be lack of chemistry or spark with the other person. Um, But keep in mind, though, that virtual dating is still still dating, like I mentioned before, even if it's a Zoom date. You know, I always remind my clients chemistry can take some time to build, especially face to face. So it may take one or two dates for that chemistry to develop. But I always rule of thumb is if you had a good time, you enjoyed that person, you smiled, you laughed, always go on a second date, even a third date. You know, there's many times I've seen clients have a really great first date and then they're like, well, I don't know, I didn't feel that chemistry. And I say, well, listen, you just went on for 10 minutes about how great the date was, but you're not sure if you're going to go out with them again. That's silly. Trust me, go out with them again. And nine times out of 10, Portia, they're in a relationship after that. I promise you. So give it a second chance. Rule of thumb. If you're unsure, go on a second date. You have to remember, even if it's virtual, it's a first date. People can get nervous. They may ramble. You know, they may be sweating a little bit. I mean, keep those things in mind. Some people are nervous when it comes to dating and, and that second date could go totally different in a really great direction. And that chemistry could really start developing. Absolutely. Yes, I agree. You know, and and while people are on dates, kind of like while we're on this topic, you know, what are some topics to avoid and to maybe have a discussion about on like a first date? Yeah. So um, I always tell my clients to, there's three things you definitely want to avoid on a first or second date, I would say is politics, religion, and talking about past relationships. So I get that politics and religion may be really important to you, um, but I definitely highly suggest not bringing it up on a first or a second date. Um, you don't wanna get in this conversation of, of you know what religion you are and how you grew up in that religion and how often you go to church. It, yes, I understand it's important and it may be important to you, but it's not first date stuff. It's not sexy. It's not fun to talk about. 
talk about fun stuff, talk about hobbies, talk about sports, whatever you're into, talk about how your day went, how quarantine's affecting your life. And, you know, talk about some goals that you have. Keep it light for sure. And stay, definitely stay away from those topics on a first or a second date. Cause it's just, it's just, they're not great topics to talk about on a first date because usually you'll keep going and talking on and on about it and you don't want to do that. So you really want to focus on getting to know each other. And what are like some, maybe for people who haven't been in the dating scene in a while, like what are some maybe icebreaker or conversation starters outside of, hello, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think some good icebreakers are, you know, maybe talk about what you did that this weekend. Um, talk about, you know, obviously you want to talk a little bit about what you do for a living professionally. Um, again, don't get into a deep conversation on that. I would keep that simple. Um, maybe talk about some new hobbies you've started, a book you're reading. Um, you know, there's so many things you could talk about. I mean, there really is a lot of topics you could talk about, but I would say, you know, if you're unsure, like if you're going into a first date and you haven't done it a lot, um, especially a virtual date, you know, maybe look up some good questions to ask that person. Now you don't want it to be an interview process. <laughs> Stay away from that. You know, I've seen dates happen where it's like this interview for a job thing and it's just not, it's not sexy. So definitely, um, if, if you have some questions that you want to know, ask about that, ask them, but tread lightly and keep, be open-minded too. Cause again, it's a first date. So, um, yeah, I think, I think, um, just coming up with talking about yourself a little bit, but don't talk about yourself too much. You want to, you know, you want to start a conversation. So you want to ask that person a little bit about themselves as you're telling them about you as well, if that makes sense. No. And, and I agree that does definitely, you know, like you said, just keep it light, especially on a first date. You don't want to <laughs> scare them away. <laughs> yes. You want to make it as fun as possible. Well, thanks again, Ashley, for coming on and giving our listeners some advice on social distance dating and, you know, letting them know that love is possible. That's out there. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I always love being on your show. I know. I love having you because it's always fun, you know, because this is what you do for a living. You, you know, I think on, you know, one of our last episodes, I believe for Valentine's Day, you know, yeah. you had said that you've been matching people since, you know, forever, you know, this has been, yeah. <laughs> this is indeed your calling in life. It sure is. <laughs> and that's amazing. You know, not too many people can say that I've been doing this all my life and now this is what I do professionally. Yeah. And we, it's actually been super exciting. Um, in the last couple of months, we've had, we've had three engagements. Um, yeah. And, and it's been like, it's so funny how it comes, it kind of comes in spurts, but uh, we've had three engagements so far this year, and we've had multiple clients go on hold for each other in relationships. So it's it's just been really exciting. I mean, like you said, not many people can say they help people find love every day, but it's really rewarding. That's amazing. I mean, three engagements and, you know, 2020, despite, you know, COVID shutting down a lot of weddings and all that. Hey, that yeah, makes like my heart been, warm. Like I've been saying, love is not canceled we can still find love during quarantine. Yes, I agree. So actually, you know, kind of a question for our singles, you know, our people who are riding solo like me, you know, seeing others dating and, and getting into relationships may, you know, kind of bring their spirits down like it does for me. So, you know, how can they take this time to kind of focus on themselves? Yeah, this is a great question. So for singles, you know, right now is a really unique opportunity to take some time, look inward and figure out ways to align your actions with your dating goals. And we've talked a little bit about this earlier, um, but by doing the work now, you know, you can make sure you'll show up as your best self so you can get get back to dating, you know, in person. So like I mentioned that practicing self-care, um, you know, work on improving your health, your well-being during this time, you know, add an extra workout here and there, um, get some sleep, reorganize your space, you know, clean out that closet you've been meaning to get to. Find ways to spark joy in your life. And you can start by doing those things, you know, maybe, uh, 
maybe it's going back to school or painting that collage you've always wanted to be wanted to paint but anything that you can do now to improve your well-being will not only like energize you in short term but it will also help you be happier and healthier in this crisis that we're having so i think those are some really great things to focus on right now yeah i agree i mean you know like i said i'm really taking advantage of this quarantine told time that we have i mean it's it's been working for me now i can't right. speak for everybody but it has indeed been phenomenal journey um you know going through this whole new healthy lifestyle that i'm doing um really diving into my creative outlets that I've been neglecting for years. Cause you know, life hits you, you have to go to work, go to school, come home, pay this bill, cook that, do that. Like, you know, we're always on the go constantly. It's like, sometimes, exactly. I, sometimes I wonder why my head doesn't just spin off like a dreidel, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> but it's so easy. It's so easy to get caught up in that and not, think about yourself and put yourself first, you know, um, it, it's just easy to do. And right now with this uncertain time, it's a great, great time to start with some self care, throw away those negative thoughts, you know, really focus on making yourself happy and doing the things that you've wanted to get done. Um, you know, things will be back to normal, you know, staying positive and, and knowing that you're going to go on actual dates here again. You're going to go back to work and we're going to be able to, you know, swim in pools this summer. So it's all going to pass, but um, it's obviously important to stay safe. Like I've been telling my clients, but there are plenty of things that you can do that spark interest and really energize you. And it's going to get you the right foot forward when you are ready to get back out there and date again. Well, then I think too, Ashley, you know, people need to understand that everybody's relationship is going to be different. Like, I think some people get stuck in that, like I'm guilty of it getting into the comparison boat, but it's like, you have to realize that just because your best friend and her husband have, you know, a different type of relationship doesn't mean that your next one is going to be identical to what they have. Yeah. You know? that, and that comes into being open-minded, you know, <laughs> there may be sometimes it's not always going to be your prince charming that comes along but it's just going to be that person right for you if that makes sense you know um i always tell my clients you know write down what's really important to you but then take from that list those must-haves because you may not hit every checklist on your box when you're looking for that person but what's more important is it that they're a good person is it that they're, you know, goal oriented, that they have a good job, that they're kind, they're giving, um, or is it that they're six, five, you know, what things are most important? So if you are open-minded to that and, and, and really focus on being happy and meeting that special person, then that's most, that's what's important when it comes to dating. I agree. I mean, you know, you have to have, to me, set standards. Right. You know, you have to know exactly what you're looking for. Even if there's a one-off here and there, if they meet at least majority. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was just going to say something. It just slipped my mind. Hold on one second. Um, you just said something that was really important is it's, um, it's not, like you said, it's, it may not be the perfect person for, it might not be that person you always imagined, but they're still probably a really good person for you. So, um, get that out of your head. Like that, that thing that you're thinking that you, that you want, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want you to settle for anybody. You know, right. I want you to be happy and that's really important, but at the same time, be realistic realistic in what your needs and wants are in a relationship and communicating that. I think a lot of people get in a, get in a situation where they, they're not communicating what they want, what the end goal is. And then, you know, five months down the road, they're like, wait, you don't want to get married and have kids. Don't waste your time. Communicate, say what you want to say to that person and be open. Um, but, um, be realistic. 